If you think you have what it takes to make the best bracket out there, then you've got to join our ESPN Bracket Challenge for the far end of the bench. We're bringing it back for 2022. One bracket this time, one bracket entry per person. Once you get signed up, you follow us on all of our social medias at FEOTVPod. You guys can see, if you're watching on our YouTube or on the Spotify video, you can see the sign in the background. Uh, be sure, follow us there, subscribe to our YouTube channel, sign up, and then when the brackets do come out, make sure you make your picks. Lock in your picks before the tournament starts. And if you win, you have a chance to win a $150 Visa gift card. You'll get bragging rights. You'll get a shout-out from us. You might get one of the shirts that we still have hanging around for free. But we'll definitely be giving you guys a $150 Visa gift card for the winner, whoever has the most right teams, correct teams picked in that tournament. The link is pinned currently on our social media, at FEOTVPod, on our Twitter. It was on our uh, story on Instagram. It's also going to be in our bio on Instagram as well. So sign up today, Far End of the Bench 2022, I believe it's Bracket Challenge. Um, if you just search FEOTB 2022 bracket, you guys should be able to find the group or you can check out the links directly in our bios and a pin to our social media profiles. But get in on the action. Winner walks away with some cheddar this year. Uh, and that could be you. $150 could be in your pocket if you know March Madness as well as you think you do. So let's get in it, get on it, get signed up with the far end of the bench. All right, you guys couldn't think I'd go this long without talking a little bit about the NFL. And it's free agency-ish. Free agent period hasn't actually started. We have passed the date where teams can start franchise tagging the players that they aren't quite sure if they want to sign the long-term deals and keep around. So that was a major thing that happened. I talked a little bit about Aaron Rodgers and his appearance on the Pat McAfee show last week, and it was pretty much surrounding that date of the franchise tag and whether or not the Packers ooh, excuse me, were, uh, were going to give Devontae Adams a franchise tag or a long-term contract and see if maybe that sways Aaron Rodgers' decision one way or the other. Uh, as it stands currently, there has been a major shift. So if you remember last year on the first night of the NFL draft, there were all of the rumors flying behind Shailene Woodley being from Boulder, uh, Aaron Rodgers being in, in Hawaii with Miles Teller. <clears throat> Aaron Rodgers wanted out of the Green Bay Packers organization. He was not happy with the way they got rid of players that he liked didn't keep around the receivers he wanted, didn't draft a receiving weapon for him, drafted his successor, all of this kind of stuff. They worked out a deal, and the contract is pretty much set. It doesn't say it specifically, but the way that the contract works, when it gets into effect as it currently is written, it becomes astronomically cost-effective for the Green Bay Packers. It's an organization who already doesn't have very much money behind them because their owner is a group ownership behind the fans. All of that table setting now out of the way. Brian Gutenkunst at the NFL Combine on Tuesday, the day that I'm recording this, the day before as you guys are listening to this, stated that he has not received a single phone call regarding an offer for a one Aaron Rodgers to play quarterback. Now, he's also saying that the Green Bay Packers are not shopping for a deal for Aaron Rodgers, which I can believe. Maybe you don't necessarily go around. You're not making cold calls when you're trying to trade a guy like Aaron Rodgers, but you keep your phone line open in case somebody wants to give you some attention. Uh, but Goon Coon said, nope, nobody's said anything about it. Aaron Rodgers seems like we worked things out, and it's starting to lean more towards maybe 70-30. Aaron Rodgers goes back to Green Bay, and he's going to be a Packers quarterback for another season. At least, at least. I know that all the Broncos fans out there listening, just you're listening to this through your Bluetooth, you just threw your phone at your car stereo, you turn me off in your headphones, it's over with. Now, now, when you guys turn on the podcast again, you guys come back, you turn the video back on, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Far End of the Bench, follow at FEOTB Pod. You guys are back with me now, Broncos Country. Hear me out. This means we need to start thinking about plan B, C, D, E you got to start thinking about your backup plans when it comes to the quarterback situation because Aaron Rodgers, very may, he might not be on the market. And then you've got to think about it. Russell Wilson 
said that Denver would be on the list of teams that he would move his no-trade clause for, but is it really going to be? Can Russell Wilson come into a division with the Denver Broncos where he's got to play Justin Herbert two times a season, Patrick Mahomes two times a season, Derek Carr two times a season? I was thinking about it earlier today. I don't know if the Broncos are as intriguing of a destination as they were when Peyton Manning came here. When Peyton Manning was deciding if he wanted to come be the starting quarterback of the Denver Broncos, the quarterbacks he was going to be playing in his division, I wrote this down because I found it comical. Uh, in San Diego, because it was the San first off, two of the three teams are no longer in the city that they were in back in 2011 when Peyton Manning first came to Denver. So be, take that for what it's worth. San Diego had Phillip Rivers. He was considered the number one quarterback in the division. The Kansas City Chiefs had former Brady disciple Matt Castle off of his 11-5 season in relief for the GOAT a couple years before that. You had in Oakland, the Oakland Raiders quarterback was Jason Campbell. Peyton Manning looked at the AFC West back then and licked his chops. Yeah, as long as you get a few pieces around him, those teams are not doing anything. Now, Chiefs ended up getting Andy Reid. Alex Smith, Patrick Mahomes, things changed and made it much more difficult as they, as Peyton Manning was here. But when he came here, it was slim pickings. He was replacing a Tim Tebow at quarterback. He had all of the expectations in the world, but really, if Peyton Manning had his worst statistical season, it was going to be three times better than what Tim Tebow could have done in his career high. And I will stand behind that as a guy who loved nothing more than Tim Tebow being the quarterback for the Denver Broncos. I had, I have a Broncos Tim Tebow jersey. So it's not like I I was a, a, not a fan of the guy. It, it just seems a little bit odd to me that, you know, Denver has done this before. But I don't know if it's in the same situation. It's a very difficult division. It's a very difficult conference to get through in the playoffs-wise. The NFC, if you can't win a Super Bowl in the NFC, you can't get to the Super Bowl as a representative of the NFC, you got a lot of issues. Like I question you mentally. I question you in the big moments and big games because the NFC the past few seasons, there's been like one team that has been head and shoulders above the rest. And you think about it, mainly in the regular season, at least it's been the Green Bay Packers and for a few rounds in the playoffs. Um... Aaron Rodgers has not been able to do anything with that. So what is he going to be able to come here and do with guys like Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, and Cortland Sutton? I don't know. You can't give me one of those three receivers that are even half as good as Devontae Adams. Noah Fant, not as good a tight end as Robert Tunyon is. Their offensive line, come on. Aaron Rodgers has like a Cadillac in Green Bay at the offensive line. He'd be coming here and driving in a 2000 Nissan Sentra. Uh, it, it just doesn't seem like the Broncos have done anything. It, they didn't lay out any other prep work other than getting Aaron Rodgers' favorite coach as their new head coach. That's the only thing that they really did in order to make their situation any better for Aaron Rodgers. Uh, other, elsewhere in the trade world, um, the, the I was actually listening to this on the way over, recording in the videos, by the way, and, and the podcast in Bree's apartment. So shout out Bree for giving us the space and he, she, she's also the one who supplied the sign so if you guys watch the YouTube videos and enjoy the uh, neon sign she got that for me for Christmas but I was listening to the radio on the way over here and I'm I'm hearing Mitchell Trubisky yes that former Nickelodeon valuable player MVP Mitchell Trubisky double doink Mitchell Trubisky is a hot scalding hot free agent prospect now it in a way this does you know looking at it without the last three years which is pretty much his entire career I know but without the last three years you just look at that first season he had with Matt Nagy of all people as his head coach 11 and 5 11 and 3 as a starter I think two of their uh, two of the games he didn't play in and, and they didn't uh, have their starters in for so 11 and 3 as a starter should have won the divisional round of the game if he didn't have Cody Parkey kick any 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 and all uprights and crossbars that he could. Uh, he probably wins a divisional round game or the wild card game and gets to the divisional round that season. And who knows what happens to the Chicago Bears organization after that? Because if you think about it, Double Doink is still haunting that franchise. 
Uh, so Mitchell Trubisky did have a season where he was successful. He has had a couple seasons now with Brian Dable in Buffalo, who just got a new head coaching position for the Giants. Uh, and we'll talk about the Giants here in the, in the next few moments too. But Mitchell Trubisky now has been behind a guy like Josh Allen who plays a similar style. I don't think that Mitchell Trubisky can play the exact same way. He's not as big and physical and durable as Josh Allen. So he'll play a similar style to Josh Allen. But he's learned the offense and the schemes underneath Brian Dable and Matt Nagy now. And if he does come to a team like Denver with Nathaniel Hackett who runs the exact same offense as pretty much 80% of the league and oh not to mention the two teams that were in the Super Bowl in the West Coast style offense maybe that's going to be something that works out for the Denver Broncos it could be a Jake Plummer situation because if you remember Jake Plummer he had some success in Arizona but it was mainly bad Arizona wasn't a good franchise when back in the late 90s when Jake Plummer was there he came to Denver got us to an AFC championship I remember I remember very well lost to the Steelers that was the same season that the Steelers beat uh, the Bengals, too, and tore Carson Palmer's ACL. I remember it very well. <clears throat> that might be something that's interesting for the Denver Broncos. It's also interesting to think about, you know, what can Drew Locke do with a guy like Nathaniel Hackett? What was the other coach that Drew Locke was successful underneath? Rich Gangarello. What did he bring to the table? He was young. He was innovative. He was an offensive-minded guy. He was going to be doing things and putting Drew Locke in situations and running the football and establishing a run game, doing the things that needed to be done so that Drew Locke could be successful. Nathaniel Locke is going to do all of that, and, and probably better than Rich Gangarello did. No offense to Rich Gangarello, but he just he didn't have the experience. Nathaniel Hackett has the experience. He's learned under great coaches. Learning under Sean McVay and Matt LaFleur, all those guys. Kyle Shanahan, Matt... Mike Shanahan, that coaching tree is as rock solid as it is for a reason. So Nathaniel Hackett could do something with, I think, even Drew Locke, a guy that's on the roster still, or Mitchell Trubisky, uh, if, if that's something that, that could possibly happen. I don't want to see Kirk Cousins, even though I don't care if the Broncos win or lose, I do not want to see Kirk Cousins play for the Denver Broncos. For one, you're going to take all of that shiny new cap space that you have to use possibly down the road, you're going to use all of it to try and cover the amount of money that he's going to. If you don't get some money relieved in that deal, you you are absolutely ridiculous. So you're going to have to do something to lessen the financial hit of his contract. And then, you know, are the Broncos that much more talented than the Minnesota Vikings? I think Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen are better receivers than anything that the Broncos can throw out there. Maybe the Broncos have a better tight end, maybe a little bit, sl a slightly better defense, but what is Kirk Cousins going to come here and do with this roster either? The only force multiplier of this roster would be Aaron Rodgers or maybe Russell Wilson. Other than that, this is going to be a lateral type of thing, and I love, I, I love all those Broncos. I have a lot of Broncos fans in my life. I love all, every single one of you guys. It is not that close, you know, if you want sustained success, it's not going to be that close and you're going to fix it. It's going to take some time. You're going to have to focus. You're going to have to do some other things in order to get yourself back into that situation. Um, other other news of, and trades that I heard, it's actually interesting. Um, the new GM for the New York Giants, Joe Schoen, uh, he's looking to put Saquon Barkley, he's not 110% off the trading block. Saquon Barkley could possibly be moved by the New York Giants if the deal was lucrative enough. Now, how lucrative does that deal have to be? Saquon Barkley's coming off of another season where he didn't play a lot due to injury. Uh, I believe this was an ankle this season. It was a knee the other season. He was the number two overall pick in his draft class, so you gotta you got to give him that. When he does play, he has shown flashes of being the best athlete on the field in a game where all you're playing against are the best best athletes in the world. He could possibly, when he's on the field, he possibly has the ability to take game over on every single play, even in the NFL. What is that going to be worth to a team? Now, I, it could be he, he could get some team that comes out of nowhere. I can see like the the Jets. No offense, uh, our guest Peter Andrasani of the PTV Sports Network. Be sure to check out that interview if you haven't uh, on our feed. 
and check out him at PTV Sports Post on Twitter. But no offense to you guys, that seems like a move that the Jets would do and way overpay or way overspend in a trade for Saquon Barkley to steal him away. He gets to stay in the same stadium. He just goes across the locker room hall. And, you know, he hasn't proven the ability to stay healthy for a majority of the season. He has not proven to be one of these backs that can transcend, buck that trend of the two seasons of great production and then just injury after injury after injury. We're seeing it in Carolina with Christian McCaffrey. You know, not, not many people remember this. He was also on the trading block at one point in the season just because he doesn't, hasn't shown the ability to stay on the field. Saquon Barkley is inching his way towards that status, and Joe Schoen coming out and saying, yeah, we're, we're totally good with finding somebody to uh, trade for Saquon Barkley for us. We, we're 100% open to a trade call if the deal is right. We'll go ahead and move Saquon Barkley out of here. That is absolutely nuts. But then, it isn't the regime that drafted him. They might not have any use for him. They might see better value drafting later round guys because we're getting a lot of these later round running backs able to come in and, and produce. Clyde Edwards Laird, Kansas City was a second round draft pick. Uh, Joe Mixon, second round draft pick. Um, Cam Akers was a late round draft pick. You, you don't have many of these first round running backs that are still doing a whole bunch of good other than you know Zeke Elliott and Derrick Henry so <clears throat> it's interesting that the Giants are are looking to move on but it's clear that they're setting things up they're gonna give Daniel Jones any any and all possibilities to try and take over this franchise and become the franchise quarterback that they drafted him to be and if that means getting rid of Saquon Barkley for a few more extra draft picks this season and maybe a player you can get a decent player in return for Saquon Barkley that might be what the Giants are best, better off doing. Um, you know, it's just difficult for running backs. Most of them don't see a second contract with the same team, and most of them don't see the end of that second contract unless you're a guy like Legarrette Blunt or uh, Adrian Peterson, Frank Gore, a guy that's just a freak and can play until you're 40 at the running back position. It just doesn't happen all that much. Uh, that's the NFL trade rumors. We're going to go ahead. We'll, we'll get into the Mile High Report, talk about the Nuggets and Avalanche and wrap up week two of the Ryan Pine series here with the far end of the bench.